Let's we'll start now directly with this important uh, webinar, Ukraine's accession to the EU single market program, looking into SME landscape and the needs of entrepreneurs in Ukraine. We had already in March a first round table in Strasbourg. It was very successful, very interesting. And we thought we have to make it more public with more audience. And uh, I have to say thank you very much to Ivan Stefanetz, member of the European Parliament, president of SME Europe, board member of SME Connect, who is the second time our host. And uh, you are really a fighter for Ukraine, really with, with your heart in this topic. And I have also to say thank you very much to the today co-host Lukas Mandel, member of the European Parliament, vice president of SME Connect, also very engaged in the topic of Ukraine. I have to say thank you that you give so much efforts, I think, for this one of the, I think, historical uh, conflict between democracy and dictatorship. And we see this now fighting in Ukraine. Uh, we have uh, distinguished speakers um, uh, today. First, I have to say, to mention Marcin Nowatsky, president of the European Enterprise Alliance and a uh, European ECOSOC reporter to the opinion to the Ukraine Solidarity Alliance. Thank you very much. Uh, you are one of the initiators, a uh, great partner with ZPP, uh, uh, ZPP and the European Enterprise Alliance. Uh, a good uh, working relation we have since years, and I have to say, you are also very active in Ukraine and personally, I think every month there, I see you always here in Kiev. I thank you very much that you are here today. And we have the Singlish speakers today from Ukraine. Uh, first, Katarina Glaskova, Executive Director Center of the Union of Ukraine Entrepreneurs. Thank you that you're here today. Then we have Olena Ero, Unlimited Ukraine Program Coordinator with the European Business Association. Thank you that you are here today. Then we have Naza Bubitsky, Union of Entrepreneurs and uh, employers of the Kiev office. Thank you very much. And we have uh, today also Nina Lechuk, co-founder of Impact Force in the United, uh, United for Ukraine. And uh, now um, we have also Mr. Prokopets. You are here now. Oh? Perfect. Because yeah, Mr. Valery Prokopets, our uh, honorable uh, guest speaker today, Deputy Director, Head of the Division Department of Regulatory Policy and Entrepreneurship, Ministry of Economy of Ukraine. Thank you very much that you are here today. And we're starting directly with the welcome. Ivan, the, play, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Horst, for introduction, also for putting us uh, all together. As you mentioned, this is already second round uh, of this very important topic. I, I'd like to greet also my Ukrainian friends and everybody who participated at that time and participates uh, also today. Uh, still, we know that we are facing very challenging time uh, due to this criminal Russian invasion of Ukraine. But on the other hand, uh, still, it is very good sign that we keep European unity. This is very, very important from uh, Brussels point of view, from point of view of European institutions, we keep the unity and we have to translate this uh, European unity also into concrete steps. So from European uh, institutions, we try to help uh, uh, to Ukraine and to Ukrainian people uh, in, in three levels. Basically, this uh, first level is political support. As we know, Ukraine has already candidate status, which is the next step. Uh, we can uh, develop uh, all the activities based on this political support. Secondly, we continue is financial and humanitarian support. And certainly, last but not least, um, first time ever, uh, uh, we support also country via uh, defense industry, via financing uh, defense uh, uh, tools, which is also important during this uh, war. But uh, the topic is uh, SMEs. The topic is very important because uh, based on the figures, uh, also Ukrainian's economy, which is suffering quite a lot, shrinking 35% last year, is based on small and medium entrepreneurs as the whole European Union. So more than 80% of jobs in Ukraine are created uh, by SMEs. So uh, the best uh, help uh, for Ukrainian economy and for our cooperation, I do believe, is the connection between uh, uh, SMEs in EU and SMEs in Ukraine to put them together and also to develop the same challenges, which are also in Europe, uh, European Union, there are the challenges uh, facing uh, accession to finance uh, or access to finance. Uh, then 
uh, fighting against bureaucracy and also how to get better labor force, uh, how to educate uh, labor. Those are three major challenges which we are facing also uh, in the European Union. I think that's uh, the framework which we can cooperate with uh, Ukrainian SMEs as well. Uh, there were some positive uh, steps forward, particularly in February this year. Uh, Madam uh, President of the Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, as we know, she signed uh, this um, accession uh, of Ukraine to the single market, which is also next step forward, very important step. And there are many initiatives which uh, should be developed and should be realized uh, uh, for successful cooperation. Uh, first of all, there is 7.5 million euro facility in terms of uh, in terms of uh, supporting uh, uh, Ukrainian SMEs in so-called ready for EU uh, funds. Uh, there is also the opportunity to join Erasmus for young entrepreneurs. Uh, this uh, application uh, is open since 28th February, and uh, deadline will be. Uh, 27th of April, so uh, by the end of this month. And also, I think, very important initiative, uh, which we have to evaluate, is this matchmaking uh, platform between EU and uh, Ukraine, which creates the uh, platform for connections, for exchanging experience, and for new uh, connections, new business uh, plans between EU and Ukrainian SMEs. So first meeting was in Košice, Slovakia, um, and uh, I do hope it will continue. So once again, to conclude it, uh, I do believe that the uh, concrete steps and uh, cooperation between SMEs is the best uh, help to recover Ukrainian economy and to, uh, to come closer to the European Union. Of course, there are many legislative issues, but uh, I do hope that uh, together we are stronger and uh, our common uh, work for a better business environment for SMEs will be also successful uh, if uh, we are cooperating together. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much, Mr. Stefanetz, for this very brief and uh, welcome and uh, focusing on SMEs. The next speaker this will be local, Lukas Mandel, Member of European Parliament, Vice President of SME Connect. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, Horst Heitz. Uh, thanks for uh, this gathering uh, online and very timely. It's uh, so important to look deeper into the future perspectives during times of war, which we still experience today, but we have to do both at the same time, defense, sanctions and also uh, seeking out for future perspectives in two fields of economy. The one is rebuilding Ukraine and I very much support the Europe, uh, European Commission in its endeavors to uh, create already now the structures for rebuilding Ukraine after this incredible war of aggression. Uh, and uh, on the other side, uh, the future opportunities, especially for small and middle-sized enterprises. That's not only the case because all of us like small and middle uh, sized enterprises very much, but uh, also because uh, small and middle-sized enterprises are in each healthy economy on earth, the true backbone of economy and businesses. And this is also true for Ukraine. Uh, and this will be uh, an important factor in uh, not only rebuilding Ukraine, but strengthening Ukraine and future prosperity and opportunities for this generation and generations to come in Ukraine in the single market. And that's the second point. Uh, the single market of European Union is uh, the strongest market on earth. Uh, we strengthen it and we have been strengthening it for many years through to free trade agreements with other parts of the world. At the moment, we are uh, highly interested into a good and fair and uh, proper free trade agreement with uh, Latin America uh, named uh, Mercosur. Uh, and this is one of the places on earth where, where China, our systemic rival, as we call it in European Union, our strategic compass, this is one of the places on earth where China is not yet that present, Latin America, uh, but also other parts of the world which are like-minded, uh, as like-minded as Ukraine, which is even defending these values, like-minded in terms of values, democracy, rule of law, a free market economy, of course, 
uh, also social welfare at a specific uh, stage. Uh, also other parts of the world like New Zealand, like Japan, like South Korea, like Australia, like Canada, uh, are included in our framework to strengthen the single market, to strengthen European economy and Ukraine will be part of this single market. That's my second point. My third point I want to share with you is this will not be a gift to Ukraine. Not a gift, but it's well deserved and it will also strengthen Europe in its entirety. This is a very important point since we are all elected officials. We have to respond on a daily basis to the citizens in our constituencies uh, that uh, we are not uh, granting a gift, a help, a support, or whatever uh, to Ukraine, uh, including Ukraine uh, small business enterprises and uh, especially young, young people from Ukraine into the single market. But uh, it's quite the other way around. It will strengthen Europe. Ukraine is huge. Ukraine is full of resources. I, I don't do not only mean natural resources. I mean in the first place human resources. And that's the fourth point and last point I wanted to make in these introductory remarks, uh, that's the strength of the IT sector, of software engineering, of software architecture, of many, many endeavors in the field of digitalization in Ukraine because of the great people there who are uh, self-educated uh, in many, many cases, who have been self-educating themselves for many, many years already and are already as one of the strongest forces on earth when it comes to uh, the field of digitalization and this will be a strength for Europe as well because we are talking all the time about innovation in Europe uh, but we also have to do it uh, and uh, even if uh, Emmanuel Macron the president of uh, the French Republic spoke in The Hague yesterday uh, it was meant to be a big European speech of the French president outside France he even spoke in English language which is very rare when it comes to a French president and uh, what he said was uh, that uh, Europe uh, must not remain the continent of consumption. It will be uh, the continent of production also. This is not only something I have been stating for many years, but uh, OK, I'm only a small parliamentarian, but I totally agree with it. But we have to do something about it. And part of it is to include uh, the strong, creative, very, very skilled young Ukrainian people uh, young people and small and middle-sized enterprises in the field of digitalization in the single market, which will be uh, an essential part of the future economy of Europe. That's what I'm convinced of. That's why I'm happy that we have this timely, timely gathering on this important issue. And I think uh, SME Connect and uh, Horst Heitz uh, and also my uh, colleague and president, Ivan Stefan, it's very much uh, that we can come together here and uh, that we seek out uh, joint opportunities. Best regards from Brussels. Thank you, Mr. Mandel. I have to say you pointed the right things out. Uh, Ukraine is a partner and a win for Europe. Uh, I think it's not only a gift to offer them the, the partnership or the, the membership in the European Union. It's really a strategic value. And uh, first line, Ukraine is, is a democracy and an example for all the former Soviet republics. And I think you will, if Ukraine will be the role model, how it can be a different way for people in freedom. Thank you very much. And we're coming now to the introduction of our partner, Marcin Novatsky, president of the European Enterprise Alliance. Please, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Horst. Uh, thank you to, to both uh, members of the European Parliament and to uh, presidents of the SME Europe. Uh, thank you to all of you for, for being with us. Too. I'd like to kind of uh, introduce us to the topic uh, by saying where we are in terms of the uh, uh, market integration of the Ukraine's integration with the single market. Of course, the single market consists of four freedoms. Uh, I would uh, I would focus I will focus on one of them: free movement of goods, which is kind of most relevant right now. Uh, uh, critical in terms of the uh, market access group. Uh, I will refer to the recent assess follow-up assessment by the European Commission, but also uh, to our practical knowledge as we run uh, in Poland, in Warsaw, we run Business for Ukraine Center, uh, which works uh, in my like national organization, ZPP, which is a kind of back office for, for NASA's office in Kiev, 
uh, to to provide assistance, uh, contacts, uh, and and kind of support in the process of entering the uh, single market. But uh, we must know that for now, for today, thanks to the uh, to the council and the parliament, um, Ukraine, according to decision from May two thousand twenty two. Uh, has uh, full access to, to the single market, full in terms of, I mean here, and what is meant by the decision is that we don't have any tariffs, uh, nor quotas for products. So that's one thing, uh, which is very positive. <clears throat> the second thing, uh, the, the decision was taken for one year long, or it's, we are about to, uh, to prolong this decision. Uh, but uh, one thing is that there are no quotas, no tariffs. Second is uh, is uh, admi admi about the legal basis, administrative structure for technical regulations, standards, conformity assessment, accreditation, methodology, uh, and market surveillance. All those issues are important, uh, perhaps a part of market surveillance right now. Uh, but uh, if we uh, want to introduce the product from Ukraine to the single market, it means that uh, in terms of uh, uh, technical regulation standards, uh, conformity assessment, it must be uh, done anyway, as for other players in the European Union, that the same refers to Austrian or Polish uh, producer, you know, we need to go, go through, through those uh, parameters. Uh, but the integration of, with the single market of Ukraine is taking place for, for years. So there are, uh, there are products, uh, there are components uh, where Ukraine has adopted regulation to align itself with the EU ACQUI. Uh, just to give you uh, some examples, uh, those are electromagnetic uh, components low voltage components, radio equipment, toys, cosmetics, uh, uh, some of the machinery, uh, some of the personal protective equipment uh, is fully aligned with the uh, EU ACQUI, so it's quite very easy to, to access the, the single market. Now, there are products that are partly aligned, uh, so you need to go for the procedure, but very easy one, like lifts, cable, ways, uh, gas appliances, uh, uh, just to give the, uh, the, the examples to, uh, where we need to still like make sure that uh, before the product enters the single market, we need to uh, often uh, provide different uh, labeling, of course, uh, different packaging, eco design is becoming important. So uh, it is something that needs to be in line. Uh, what is uh, uh, not aligned uh, is very interesting, the very large Ukrainian sector of chemicals. Uh, so here we are lacking the procedure of registration, evaluation, authorization, and restriction of, uh, of chemicals. Uh, the, the, uh, the Ukrainian law is not aligned with the REACH regulation yet, although it's happening. So. Uh, so this is probably the largest sector where we have some um, uh, long, uh, long procedures, procedures and and uh, problems. Uh, I mean the largest in terms of non-food sectors, uh, which is important uh, because uh, uh, the food sector is kind of it's really different. Uh, so in all uh, food related products, um, the single market and, and the EU stays quite uh, uh, quite bold in terms of, of the conformity, uh, certifications uh, and, and procedures. And I can give you some examples of how long it can take to really go through the procedure to enter the single market. We have a Ukrainian company uh, producing uh, producing a cheese uh, a cheese product in Ukraine and right now working on the on the entrance the single market uh, 
we estimate that altogether it will take up to eight months uh, to get all the provisions to enter with the cheese product uh, uh, to the single market. So it shows how like complex is, is the matter, how complex is the issue. Uh, but then, because of the decision from May last year, it's quite easy to to export from Ukraine uh, chicken, like uh, raw chicken uh, uh, to the single market. Of course, there is a veterinary inspection in place entering the, the, the EU border and the single market, uh, the Schengen zone. Uh, this is happening. Uh, but a part of that, we do not go, I mean, the EU side do not go and do not check uh, the, uh, the, the standards, and the way uh, the, the animals are, are, are uh, fed in, in Ukraine. Uh, so we simply check the final raw, raw product. So it's kind of complex depending on the product. You can easily enter the single market uh, or it takes time. I think there is a, a large also role of, um, of member states, of business partners uh, uh, in the EU to somehow refer uh, specific uh, agencies, institutions where companies, SMEs from Ukraine can uh, uh, get the, the certification, can go, through, can really get to know that the whole the whole procedure. Uh, but I wanted to say that, like working with number of of uh, Ukrainian companies, regardless of their size and sector, they are extremely dynamic. Uh, flexible in terms that, that they look and approach the single market. So I'm pretty sure uh, the process will continue. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised that uh, uh, once the war ends, we will keep uh, a large part of the single market uh, open for Ukraine because we, we will realize that the number of products, even if in those where the integration is still happening, we don't see any troubles. We don't see any uh, any difference in terms of standards, quality, uh, even the opposite. Uh, so I would say uh, that the period we experience right now can be critical for us to really open up and, and uh, for, for Ukraine as a uh, as a strong partner and participants of the of the single market. What is important, I wanted to use the presence of, of members of the parliament, is that uh, in order to do so, to really go forward, uh, we need to open negotiations with uh, Ukraine. Of course, we appreciate, we were all, as we are here, lobbying uh, towards the candidate status. It's, it was a very bold, uh, important political decision. Uh, but in order to move things faster, uh, also smoother in terms of both sides, getting involved uh, business groups, uh, specific sectors where we need to negotiate, it is important to open the uh, negotiation process uh, according to, to, uh, to announcements and those uh, milestones that were uh, agreed, it's, it should happen this year. Uh, I'd like to kind of appeal that we all make sure that it happens uh, this year. Uh, we'll all make sure that it happens uh, before the, the war ends, because this is the momentum for the integration process to really uh, uh, start it up. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Nowatsky. I think you gave us really a detailed overview of uh, what the European Union is doing and what is still needed. I think there's a lot to do still, but I've, we're going the right direction. But you have to become faster. And, and I, I think uh, this is for all good for us. Now we're coming to, to the keynote by Valerie Popetz, Deputy Director, Head of Division, Department of Regulatory Policy and Entrepreneurship, Ministry of Economy of Ukraine. Thank you that you are here with us. And uh, now we are very keen to hear what Ukraine entrepreneurs needs now in this very difficult times. Thank you very much. Plus, yours.
Thank you. Uh, I sincerely congratulate all the participants of uh, this round table and thank you for the opportunity to be a speaker today. Uh, I would like to emphasize uh, that we highly appreciate uh, the opportunity to join uh, important European programs and initiatives. Uh, as uh, was already several times said, the full-scale Russian war became unprecedented challenge for uh, Ukraine economy. Uh, enterprises of all types of economic activities operated in challenging conditions and uh, had to adopt to uh, the reality of the present in real time, but continued to work. Uh, the government of Ukraine adopted and implemented a whole set of measures, programs, uh, projects, uh, which uh, softened uh, the shock effects on the, on the economy. Uh, as you uh, maybe know, the program of relocation, affordable loans, 579 uh, grant programs under the general name Eurobota, uh, the regulation uh, initiatives, uh, and uh, most of them we can't uh, provide without uh, your help, your support, European support, I mean. Um, uh, meanwhile, the continuation of the hostilities, which may accompany it by rocket attacks uh, with high probability, even under the condition of enhanced uh, defense, with modern A defense system can still cause uh, further destruction. In such uh, circumstances, the business uh, opportunities provided by uh, the EU uh, single market program are particularly uh, relevant and signif significant for Ukrainian SMEs. Uh, Ukrainian accession to the European Union single market program will allow we believe in that to strengthen cooperation with eu which is especially uh, important and relevant in view in view of european integration process and european uh, acquisition of the status of a candidate uh, for eu mm. as you know uh, agreement was signed uh, on february 2 uh, uh, and now process of ratification on the agreement is uh, currently uh, ongoing. Um, we, uh, regarding available business opportunity with the program, I'd like to mention, uh, as you already said, the European Commission has already launched uh, two calls for proposals under the joint title ready for EU uh, with the total budget of uh, 7.5 million to support European, uh, European Ukrainian entrepreneurs and businesses uh, on benefit from the single market program. Mm. Uh, I'd like to mention uh, specifically these two program. Uh, the first uh, one business bridge with budget uh, for uh, 0.5 million will provide uh, financial support for Ukrainian SMEs, business, businesses based in Ukraine and displaced Ukrainian registered company currently operating from EU, uh, which affected uh, by the war in the form of vouchers to access services and participate in trade fairs uh, in the EU. Uh, Ultimately, the business breach will not uh, only benefit uh, the companies concerned, but it can provide uh, alternative markets to EU companies affected by the loss of Russian and Belarusian markets, uh, bring new opportunity for EU businesses to access markets uh, in, Ukraine, in Ukraine or find alternative suppliers in Ukraine and help the reconstruction of Ukraine, which is very important for us. Uh, the second call, uh, Rasmus for Young Entrepreneurs uh, Ukraine, with budget of uh, 3 million, uh, 
uh, will allow new Ukrainian entrepreneurs to gain business experience uh, in other European countries through the established Erasmus for Young Entrepreneurs program. Uh, the call will select organization in Ukraine uh, and the EU to record uh, up to uh, 430 new Ukrainian entrepreneurs and match them with uh, host entrepreneurs in the EU. Um, we believe uh, these initiatives aim to provide direct support for small Ukrainian businesses and entrepreneurs to build new partnerships with uh, European companies and expand uh, into the EU. Uh, we are convinced that only through joint efforts uh, we can achieve fast and qualitative results. And uh, uh, especially this program, single market program, uh, is a huge opportunity, whose uh, first, uh, for especially for my department, which is specialized on uh, supporting SMEs, uh, to 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 take this opportunity to help uh, to help our businesses to connect them with uh, our partners in EU. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Prokopets. I think there is a lot of efforts and, and chances in in, in this uh, area. Um, we have to connect our SMEs with you SMEs. This, I think it's also what ZPP, Mr. Nowatsky and Mr. Popitsky are doing already here. We have SME Connect, we have an SME Defense Group who wants to support and, and invest already during the war in Ukraine to support you. We have an SME Infrastructure Group, but they have always the, the problem how to connect with the, the right platforms. And we have now found a lot of partners here. We hope that we get now really closer and uh, it's becoming less bureaucratic and more, more business-like that the, the people can interact during the war econ economy. Perhaps uh, if you can support us here, this would be very helpful. I think uh, because I have to say, I underestimated how willing the SMEs are taking risk and how close they are also for the cause of Ukraine and to say, we have to do something now. Uh, thank you very much. So and now we're coming to the debate, and the first speaker is Anna Derevanko, Executive Director of the European Business Association. Please, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, first of all, thank you for the opportunity to say it or to tell you about the status of things in the business community. We are actually currently collecting sentiments of doing business during the war. Uh, however, we already can pick up certain trends uh, because final results will follow in the end of the week, but nevertheless, certain trends are already uh, pretty visualized. Uh, so what are the trends? Most of companies continue to work either in full or partially uh, and stay committed to the country. Unfortunately, only 2% had to stop operations. It's according to our um, data. And we ask companies uh, uh, who are members of the EBA and members of Unlimited Ukraine. And members of the EBA is uh, around 900 companies and Unlimited Ukraine members, it's around 5,000 uh, 5, private entrepreneurs. 74% of businesses continue to pay salaries in full, which is a good thing. And 15% uh, are actually paying even bonuses uh, to their employees. Unfortunately, 8% of our member companies had to cut salaries and two had to fire people. Uh, 70, <clears throat> when it comes to occupied territories and the losses um, uh, of their assets, 77% responded that they have no assets uh, on the occupied territories. The one that have, uh, for example, that could be cars, equipment, branches, or buildings, etc. They do not, you know, report major, major, you know, drama about this. More than half of businesses have up to 10% of company employees uh, liable to military service mobilization. And actually 25% mentioned that they have 10 or 20% of mobilized people. And unfortunately, almost half of businesses mentioned that the critical personnel is also mobilized. 
And I should uh, I would like to stress this particular thing because even today and yesterday we had a number of meetings with a few SMEs and big businesses. And they all declare that this is one of the biggest challenges at the current sta uh, stage, deficit of personnel, and because actually people are simply afraid to be mobilized to the army, and that causes troubles for the business community, which pays taxes to the state budget of Ukraine. Uh, actually, when it comes to the state support programs uh, from the Ukrainian government, 94% of our members did not use any of those state support programs to stay afloat. Uh, when it comes to relocation, 77% of businesses haven't relocated their offices on, on manufacturing, 9% relocated to the Western Ukraine, and only 4% relocated abroad. Uh, when it comes to investment plans, uh, actually last year we made those um, actually um, uh, polling of our member companies and the data we received that uh, companies reported a drop of revenues in US dollars, 29% uh, of, uh, of our members saw the drop of up to 20% and 54% of members so the drop of 21% and more. So we see that actually in dollar denominated terms, the revenues of companies in Ukraine are really reducing. Uh, only 6% of our respondents reported that they have no challenge and uh, no changes. And another 11% uh, actually received boost of their revenues uh, in such challenging year. Uh, however, 99% of member companies planned to continue operating in the Ukrainian market in 2023, and 63% even plan to invest despite the wartime. At the same time, 12% believe that it will be um, advantageous uh, or profitable for new investors uh, to enter Ukraine. So you see that only a small uh, part of our members are optimists with regards to new entrants and new investments to the market during the wartime. Still, despite some positive dynamics for the business, uh, business remains uh, difficult to work and develop. You know, it's really challenging, really challenging time. This message we try to deliver to Ukrainian government, uh, to have dialogue, to develop optimal solutions for the economic front. And especially now, when it comes to the deficit of the human resources, this dialogue becomes even more important because we believe that economic front needs to stand. Anyhow, support from the international community is also extremely important. As businesses are interested to develop globally, they, they would like to have global cooperation and expansion. Uh, Ukrainian companies have uh, all potential for this in terms of quality, speed, etc. But support is also needed. You are giving support. I mean, external support is giving is given. But nevertheless, we also need to somehow to increase, probably to a certain extent, grants, loans, but but especially political risks insurance. We need to have certain um, insurances in order to allow your investors actually to come to Ukraine and invest into Ukrainian economy. We need also expert promotion mechanisms in order to actually to boost experts from your countries to Ukraine as well. Uh, so to invest and cooperate with Ukrainian businesses, we need actually more cooperation with the global sector. Our country has a lot of opportunities. I, I think that there is no sense to repeat them in agro, in IT, food, logistics, infrastructure, pharma, etc. And investment potential of those sectors are billions of dollars. For example, IT, more than 11 billion of potential. Logistics, 123 billion of potential. So investments will definitely help global companies to expand and, and increase profits. Moreover, it will be um, possible, it will, it will help to invest into the future of the European family, as Olaf Scholz uh, said actually last year, and into your security. It's not charity, but an additional opportunity to become more prosperous and more successful. And actually to support global companies in terms of cooperation and investments in Ukraine, we as European Business Association launched Global Business for Ukraine initiative. This is association which is registered in Switzerland. Moreover, ha we have an investment map which has over 100 different projects uh, to actually to be able for you to be able to understand where it's possible to invest. So basically, I would like to underline that we are happy and we are very open to cooperate. Thank you very much for this uh, brief overview. I think what you mentioned, uh, secure the investments is, I think, very important. If I speak with also with SMEs, 
from, uh, from the European Union who wants to go to Ukraine because there's uncertainty also to send engineers or, uh, or so to, to Ukraine from, from Austria or from, from France. How they're interested if, they are, um, if something happened, this is also what, they are, what the business community is discussing. And uh, the third thing, what you say, the lack of, 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 of workforce for the Ukraine um, um, businesses, uh, companies, um, there's also, of course, a problem in the European Union. We get a lot of qualified people from Ukraine, and our, our companies would like that they stay, but this is a problem. They should, <laughs> yeah, this is a problem because uh, you, the Ukrainians are excellent ed educated and, and, and uh, very fast integrated in, in the labor market in Europe, in the European Union. But this would, yeah, not this, the idea. The idea would be that they're coming back to Ukraine to rebuild Ukraine. I think. There we have yeah, to... but you're right. But if I may, you know, in this respect to respond, you know, some people mm. will not re return to Ukraine. Uh, that's for sure. They also like to be in your countries, you know, some part of those people who left uh, Ukraine. So those refugees, we are speaking about millions of people, right? So maybe half will stay most likely in Europe in case Europe will not actually ask them to leave. But but the point is now in the country um, at the current stage that those ones who stayed, they would be welcome to work and companies would be actually desiring uh, desire, like welcoming them to work. But people in Ukraine are afraid to go to work because and they are afraid to actually to get official assignment because they believe they could be easily mobilized to the army. They could be easily drafted to the army. And what we would like to send is the message to the Ukrainian government that look, guys, we understand that security is really important. You know, it's military things are really, they are essential. They are fundamentals because security is number one issue for the whole country and for business in particular. But what is needed is actually is also to allow economic front also to stand without people, without workforce, it's not possible to make. So that's why somehow we need to actually to agree this, uh, you know, uh, this fine line. We, we need to find this fine line with the government so that to allow those males who stay in Ukraine, they should be protected to a certain extent if they work for those transparent companies which pay taxes to the state budget, which actually in the end financing the army of Ukraine. Thank you. I, I think this is a dilemma. I know it from the past. There was before some uh, system in, in, for wars that economic relevant people get a, a free pass from from the army but i don't know it should be this is a difficult question i think we have to discuss uh, later again but uh, now we come into katarina glaskova executive director center of the union of ukraine entrepreneurs please the floor is yours thank you <clears throat> i'm sorry dear partners dear colleagues thank you very much for this opportunity to present the voice of ukrainian independent ukrainian business in such very important discussion and thank you for support Ukraine and even uh, uh, take this uh, dialogue today. It's really, uh, really important for our kind cooperation. Uh, we represent as a union of Ukrainian entrepreneurs, we mostly represent small and medium enterprise because we are free of oligarch and uh, state companies. So there are mostly uh, Ukrainian entrepreneurs which make their uh, businesses from from idea, from zero, without any privatization or, or something else. And uh, uh, all of us, all of you mentioned that uh, SME are the ones which suffered a lot throughout the full-scale Russian invasion. It's uh, really so. They have to deal with the risk and risks as, and consequences of the war, including losses from destruction of assets, safety risks, destroyed infrastructure, cyber security attacks, very, very different challenges. And uh, the one more challenge is uh, export, uh, entering new markets. It's uh, especially face significant challenges with transportation of products to foreign markets, given the loss of many logistical chains. Uh, and SME will not be able to overcome all these challenges by their own, and we have to help them, we as a business association and all of, uh, all of you we discussed today this is a problem and uh, last year when we asked our members on how much time they will need in order to recover 37% uh, of them stated they need one a year 
just to get back to the pre-war performance rates. It's a really uh, difficult situation for uh, small and medium enterprise, and we have to realize it. Uh, assistance with goods and services export capacities for Ukrainian companies would be a key to helping uh, for surviving for SMEs. It's a really uh, a good uh, and important decision. And uh, there is a great interest in support programs for Ukraine exporters. And we in the Union of Ukraine Entrepreneurs understand it, try to meet these needs and even uh launch some programs for example one of them together with giz and eu for business we launch in ukraine the platform leverage platform uh matching platform to uh, matching platform with uh, eu and ukrainian uh, companies and within uh, the framework of this project we have helped several companies and in new markets by providing providing extensive individual recommendation and analysis our advice is tailored to real companies' requirements, namely the level of competition of the market, the peculiarities of the given field to work, business capacities, and so on. According to the state uh, custom uh, service, maybe you know, the export of Ukrainian goods and services decreased on 35%. It's a really huge, uh, uh, huge uh, situation. And the reduction hit all industries. Uh, Soup uh, Center for International Cooperation has taken a closer look into the obstacles business experiences while trying to enter new markets. We have conducted research called Assessment of the Needs of Ukrainian Business in Foreign Economic Activity. It was our research uh, for several hundreds of small and medium-sized companies to part in this story and the major reason on why they do not go to the new market and start to export is the lack of understanding how to start. The second major issue is absence of necessary permits and licenses, which is also partially caused by the lack of knowledge. Uh, the need for promotional program and possibilities closes the top three obstacles to exporting. Difficult, difficulties in accessing to finance and the limited availability of skilled labor remain uh, challenges as well. According to the research result and request from our members, the biggest business needs are finding partners and clients, B2B meetings, strength and cooperation with embassies in other countries, providing help in presenting quality Ukrainian products, participating in trade events. It's all, all of this, uh, all these points say about the promotion of Ukrainian uh, goods and services in uh, single market. Which is why the consulting assistance should be given and not only grants or other financial support uh, we need. Without step-by-step -step instruction, case studies, analysis, uh, promotion platforms and genuine interest in Ukrainian products, no financing would be efficient. The world had to know the advantages and capacities of Ukrainian companies so that it can benefit from them voice should be given to Ukrainian exporters and chance to present their products to enter the competitive markets. So the support to small and medium-sized businesses within the EU single market program should take into account that money is not only, uh, only one side of the coin. More attention should be given to the promotional tools. Uh, the good news uh, is that Ukrainian companies uh, uh, can quickly learn, adapt to a new uh, new reality, and uh, adopt it to a new market rules and requirements. They showed a great resilience during this year, even more than a year, uh, of full-scale Russian invasion. And previously, during the COVID situation, we have, uh, maybe, maybe you remember this problem, we had the COVID <laughs> before the war. So they can guarantee a fast inclusion in the EU regulatory framework. So Ukraine is looking forward to more educational programs, uh, shared project, new platforms that would be interesting to the European consumers and companies as well as to the Ukrainian ones. We believe that European business can also benefit from such cooperation as Ukraine can provide them with clients, partners, contractors, resources, uh, competent workforce, as you mentioned, and so on. And we in SUP will continue to do everything so that this cooperation will be possible, efficient, and strong. 
So we welcome the EU single market program initiatives aimed at Ukraine, and we are very thankful for understanding the real needs of Ukrainian entrepreneurs. It will help promote our country's status as a candidate for accession, for accession to the EU, uh, inspire our businesses to keep on doing great things, whatever the surrounding condition may be. Thank you. Maybe uh, I want to mention to one more point, uh, additional issue that the European um, countries have the highest demands for foreign economic activities among Ukrainian uh, companies and uh, constitute the largest part, more than 60% of all exports in the last year. Uh, Poland, Romania, Hungary, Germany, and Netherlands are among uh, EU countries where Ukraine exported the most in 2022, with some statistics. Thank you. Thank you very much for this very uh, good overview of what SMEs needs. I think uh, there are some problems also our SMEs in European Union are facing. It is also how to enter knowledge, how to enter the, the, the market, how to find partners, reliable partners. It's always a matter of trust and understanding. And I think here we have to make, build up an exchange. And, and, and uh, I think ZPP is doing this already, but we need more platforms like this to enter the German market. Also education, we've tried to, to get the European grant with the EPA together about food safety trainings uh, for the European standards. I think such things, knowledge you need to enter the, the internal market. And here we have to cooperate and uh, you are always invited to as and connect to ZPP that we build up something here and support us because there is a great need. Now we have the next speaker, Olena Ero, Unlimited Ukraine Program Coordinator with the European Business Association. Please, the floor is yours. Yes, Ali, thank you for the invitation for such important and useful events for small and medium-sized entrepreneurs. Uh, the year of the full-scale invasion of Ukraine was uh, one of the most difficult in the history, and of course, small and medium-sized business have faced of unprecedented challenges. But despite of the all difficulties, the majority of entrepreneurs, uh, namely like 76%, they are planning to expand their business in 2023. 28% of SMEs plan to expand their geography. 26% they are planning to launch new products. And 25% of SMEs plan to enter foreign markets. That's what showed our annual uh, research that we are conducting uh, every year in European Business Association, SME index sentiments. So, um, what are the needs of SMEs today? Because every day I'm dealing with uh, a huge number of entrepreneurs and um, we are facing that we really need uh, the European support through grants and tenders. Thank you very much for launching now two very important grants. Um, it would really help to SMEs to, to enter to foreign markets and to make such a fantastic exchanges that already was spoken by previous speakers. Of course, we would like to have more B2B matchmaking events uh, with European colleagues to support our SMEs. Of course, it would be fantastic to have common European projects such as um, educational programs. Uh, cross-border exchanges as um, Erasmus for Young Entrepreneurs. It's, it's an amazing program that showed a fantastic result because we in EBA uh, won this grant in 2019 and successfully implemented it. And uh, the result showed the huge necessity from SMEs to have such an amazing um, programs. Uh, and of course, what I would like to mention that unfortunately in Ukraine uh, at the moment there is uh, no such a single platform for SMEs um, where all SMEs needs would be collected. So European Business Association is ready to become and to start and to be a, such a platform that would be like a bridge between Europe and Ukraine. So we would be very happy to participate in all activities that you are launching in Europe. Please invite us because we have a huge base of SMEs, as my dear colleague Anna Dervianka already mentioned, 
uh, in Unlimited Ukraine project around 5,000 entrepreneurs that are really need support and assistance. So we would be very happy to cooperate with uh, our European colleagues. Thank you very much for such a fantastic event. Thank you very much uh, for this call. And I think we have already some platforms that are already mentioned from the European Enterpri Enterprise Europe Network, but I think it's not well known at the moment. And uh, I don't know if, if the functionality is really so what the SMEs needs. I get not so much feedback at the moment, but we have also to inform that such programs and platforms are existing because I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that 95% of the SMEs don't know or more don't know that they, they have these possibilities. So how to reach out to them, I know it's also difficult. And then we have not to forget language barriers. Huh? This is often also a problem for smaller SMEs, that you, how to bring them together if, if, if English is not the problem. Not also many SMEs of our side have not this, uh, this, this education to, to have a proper English for this, uh, for business language uh, level. Huh? So we have now the next speaker, <clears throat> Nazar Bobitsky, Union of Enterprise and Employers, Chief of Office. The floor is yours. And uh, yeah, I'm very keen to hear about this project. Yes. Thank you very much, colleagues. Thank you, Horst, for this opportunity to join the discussion. Uh, I represent the U Polish Union of Entrepreneurs and Employers in Ukraine. So we are right in the field. Uh, pursuing our mission to connect Ukrainian and Polish enterprises and in this way to help the Ukrainian SMEs to make the best out of this terrible situation that our country finds itself for the, already for the second uh, consecutive year. I would like to share with you a few reflections on the needs of the Ukrainian SMEs in war time and how, for instance, the EU single market program can, uh, can help meet these needs. My opinions are based on personal experiences that we have in our ZPP cave office, assisting Ukrainian enterprises. But also, I was preparing a few analytical data, but uh, I believe my colleagues and friends from EBA and SUP already delivered very comprehensive uh, overview. So I would spare the time and details. And then we'll only emphasize just for our audience to understand better in Europe that even that before the war, the Ukrainian SMEs played a very critical part in our economy. It was mostly about 60% of Ukraine's GDP that was provided by SME sector and 7 million of jobs, accounting for 40% of total uh, tax revenues deriving from direct corporate taxes. So in fact, as we have seen in the course of the last year, the Russian invasion forced on Ukrainian SMEs three key challenges that we uh, that everyone is now keen to overcome. First and foremost, a very severe disruption of logistical chains and solutions, at least in the first six months of the war. The loss of trained personnel, I think our colleagues already have mentioned that, due to the mass exodus of refugees, both internally within the country and abroad, and of course, the physical destruction of infrastructure specifically particularly in the regions, directly in the hostility in the war zone, five oblasts, the regions of Ukraine. In fact, uh, it's a pity to say, but 45% of countries' companies have been located in the frontline regions and accounted for almost 40% of your country's GDP. Now, <clears throat> in a nutshell, how we can summarize the needs of Ukrainian SMEs in today's exceptional circumstances? First and foremost, this is pretty much self-explanatory and obvious that the end of the war and cessation of hostilities will be the most important factor setting up conditions for Ukrainian SMEs to recover. Second, of course, is the availability of relatively inexpensive capital to help finance the recovery, both of fixed infrastructure and, of course, rebuilding the supply chains and offering SMEs opportunities to, to, to access the internal Ukrainian market and also the, 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 the international markets first and foremost, the EU. But what I would like to emphasize from my personal perspective is that the largest non-financial, I would say non-direct financial uh, boon for Ukrainian SMEs would be the Ukraine's candidate status that offers unique perspectives for the Ukrainian SME sector. As far as the 
one talks about opportunities of access to the market. In my opinion, uh, the Russian invasion had one unintended upside, drastic disruptions of trading ties and logistic and chains coincided basically with the historic political decision in Brussels to offer Ukraine a clear path to EU membership, a long-term decision. And it was also reinforced by a short-term decision to suspend tariffs and quotas for Ukrainian goods. And these factors be may become, have become a very powerful drivers, very powerful drivers for SMEs with export potential mostly uh, to, to take advantage of the EU market. So in, my, in this respect, in our opinion, the EU single market program should focus on key on the key topic for Ukrainian exporters among SMEs to help them prepare for the rigors of the EU internal market. Getting familiar with technical regulations and standards for manufactured goods, as well as the food safety and packaging standards that are much more difficult to, 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 take, to comply with for processed food products. And in this context, I would single out two approaches. One, it would be raising awareness and improving knowledge of SMEs of the EU internal market rule book on technical standards, as well as safety requirements for, for foodstuffs. Second, supporting business Ukrainian business associations such as SUP, such as EBA, in their expertise to advise SMEs on the nuts and bolts of EU technical regulations environment. And last but not least, contributing to institutional reforms in Ukraine in the area of harmonization of EU technical standards, certification, conformity, assessment for industrial products, and also for foods, for foodstuffs. Basically, I um, echo and support uh, the emphasis that was ma made by my colleague Marcin Novatsky when we when we em when the ZPP em emphasizes that addressing um, how to say the, the 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 deficiencies in understanding more and more importantly implementing a EU rule book on technical standards would be the biggest the single biggest contribution from the EU single market programs to help Ukrainian SMEs to succeed on the EU market. But by doing so, the EU would also contribute to other interrelated objectives, most importantly, to foster important institutional reforms in Ukraine on product safety, consumer protection, product protection and market surveillance. That would help provide pay, you know, provide payoffs visible to Ukrainian consumers of EU, um, of European integration of Ukraine and will reinforce the support in the Ukrainian society for EU rapprochement. And last but not least, from the point of view of Europe's interests, it will also promote EU-aligned regulatory climate in Ukraine in this very important area of um, technical regulations alignment, in particular in those sectors which can benefit from European investments. Such investments would help integrate select Ukrainian economic sectors with strong export potential to pan-European production chains. And then basically Ukraine would be able in this way to contribute to the overall competitiveness of the EU industries. This is all I would like to add at this point and I would be eventually open to, to questions and comments. Thank you, Horst. Thank you very much for your smart comments. I think this is what you say in this crisis is also a chance. And, uh, but I think it's really not difficult, it's really also challenging. I have to say many um, candidates for, for the or member status candidates have or in freedom times to, to, trans, uh, to uh, make this transformation. What is uh, not so easy, it's an investment, it's, 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 it's a, a change. But I think um, I have to say, if I see the numbers that 35% of your SMEs are close to the war front and 30, uh, with 30 percent of the production and even under this difficult circumstances your economy is, is is strong like it could be i have to say i have really much trust in in ukraine entrepreneurship to to handle this challenge and partnership would be very important for this and then becoming back to miss plaskova the investment is very important uh, and also mr uh, miss Terevianko, investment, huh? this, that, that uh, security. This would be uh, a, a boost if, if SMEs or companies from, from the European Union can go in partnership with, with Ukraine companies now. Huh? And I think it is uh, not a question often they're discussing this after the war, but we need it during the war. And I think this is the challenge huh? uh, to, to handle. 
I think there is a huge um, chance for, for both sides. Now we're coming to Nina Levchuk, co-founder of Impact Force and United for Ukraine. Please, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you so much uh, for having me uh, today. Thank you so much for uh, being a part of such important dialogue um, and uh, really discussing uh, uh, very important topics. Um, and um, I, like there were many things was already uh, said and um, I was uh, listening to each of the speaker bringing very impressive uh, numbers in terms exactly how strong beside the fact that uh, Ukraine SME Ukraine businesses faced uh, absolutely awful obstacles right now still continue to thrive and still continue like you know to fight for their right to be an active actors of uh, Ukraine economy. Uh, so I'm representing Impact Force. Impact Force is an um, ecosystem and Ukrainian NGO uh, where our main mission is to drive positive social change and create uh, lasting sustainable economic uh, opportunities. Um, we, um, in the, since, since the war happened, we uh, built numerous initiatives with the global uh, partners uh, where we united uh, uh, private and public, uh, basically, uh, actors within the effective uh, ecosystems where we provide them with working mechanism and basically build the structures where they could collaborate and act already now uh, within the um, as I said, um, ecosystem approaches. Uh, currently, we uh, have three directions. Um, I think for today's conversation, one of our important directions is impact businesses. And I will explain in a minute what the program we have launched with our uh, global, but as well Ukrainian partners. But beside that, we as well continue supporting uh, such direction as uh, impact food, uh, where we're working with Ukrainian farmers. And as well, we continue to support uh, private and public actors within the mental health uh, um, direction. So now if we're thinking about uh, SMEs and Ukrainian entrepreneurs, uh, our program that called Impact Business uh, UR uh, was launched in January uh, 2023, so pretty recently, in collaboration with um, uh, public, as I said, and private, uh, private actors, but as well uh, with uh, a Ministry of Digital Transformation, um, in order to support uh, Ukrainian SMEs who actively registered in Ukraine, who didn't relocate their businesses yet, and who actually continue to support Ukraine and economy now and here and create uh, basically economical opportunities for Ukraine. We heard today a um, very impressive number, right? That before war and even now, eight, more than 80% of uh, Ukraine uh, SMEs actually are the one who created jobs and are the one who creating those economical opportunities. And we as well heard impressive number that uh, in 2023, um, I, I believe it was something around 76%, if I'm not mistaken, Miss Olena was mentioning that, are actually planning to expand their uh, businesses. So looking at all of that and hearing all the needs that was today summarized about like uh, consultancy need, understanding uh, basically of the new norms of European Union as well, um, investments and so on and so on. So it's like uh, really complex and challenging if you think about and we'll try to put just on one uh, page all the needs, all the challenges challenges and all the opportunities, right? And therefore, uh, Impact Force come up with a belief that in order to address some of those needs and in order to really act effectively already now, we need to try to build the ecosystem where those uh, SMEs would be able from one side to receive high quality free education, but from another side as well have access to innovation and technology. And from the third side, really learn how to improve their investment and attractiveness. So out of those three pillars, we really decided to focus specifically as well on investment uh, uh, attractiveness and here where the impact component uh, have happened. So I will explain why actually we're focusing on the impact component and why we launched the accelerator where we're currently piloting 25 SMEs. Actually, one of them um, came by advice from European Business Association. We are very happy uh, to, to host them. Um, so why actually um, uh, we um, decide to focus on the impact business. 
Um, not sure if my colleagues made this analysis already, but uh, there is a different data about uh, how it's important that SMEs, uh, uh, who is playing the critical role within the economy, actually take a stronger role uh, within addressing biggest challenges um, in the world, including like security of information, workforce reskilling, economic inequity, climate change, and so on. So nowadays in European Union, and not only is that these expectations actually <clears throat> that SMEs become more active actors it, it is there and it's all, not all, not only within with big uh, corporate companies but as I said more and more uh, middle businesses for instance in Germany uh, in Netherlands as well in France actually are playing those um, uh, active role uh, by uh, really um, integrating um, SDGs with their, within their business strategy. So that's what is completely new, for instance, for Ukraine, but not fully new from the perspective how the war impacted those businesses. So um, a bit uh, like around seven months ago, we started our um, investigation, we basically did analysis and they identified that around 80% out of thousand uh, businesses that we interview so the dear business uh, platform actually already start to uh, integrate with their business model uh, some of the, some of the impact component and why they start to do it because it just was needed by the um, by the um, ecosystem we are right now acting so basically work ecosystem right so in Ukraine the another thing that they not fully realize that they uh, that, that now they could be actually seen as a business who has an impact component uh, integrated and they don't have a specific knowledge how to make sure that uh, this component will uh, remain um, as a um, stable part of the uh, business strategy. And so we as well interview them if they would be interested actually to understand how to accelerate and pivot their businesses and to receive actually access to additional uh, financial tools and as well uh, receive access to the uh, pro bono technological tools in order to make their business stronger. And their reply was extremely positive that basically become our motivation to bring such partners like Schwab Foundation, like as I said, Ministry of Digital Transformation as uh, numerous uh, um, as well, European NGOs, uh, but as well, big technological companies together and try to build that program. So basically, right now, what we are doing, we are, as we're saying, we are building new SDG nation. We, we want to really make sure that each SME, while um, receiving support from amazing partners and operators within the, all the needs that was described today, like uh, on the legislation le level, on the as well um, network level, right, on the um, building the new norms in order to meet uh, requirements of the, uh, within the entry to the European Union. In the same time, they actually enter there already with a very strong input component and showing through their examples how they could be uh, proactive actors within the solving the biggest crisis in the world. So not just Ukraine, but the world. So kind of become a showcase now from Ukraine for the world and for European Union specifically how to make it happen in the active way. Currently, another problem, as I mentioned, is 25, um, um, basically 25 businesses. Uh, we are very proud that out of those 25 businesses, 14 are founded by women. Um, it, it, it just happened as to the like, you know, numerous rounds uh, of uh, with a selecting committee. And uh, it's again showing, right, that uh, uh, Right now, when our men are obviously protecting our country, we see um, a rise as well of the Ukrainian women uh, who continue to drive businesses, who continue to drive SMEs, and they need the help. Um, outside of that, we could say that we are really combining very different verticals. So we have infrastructure, we have cybersecurity, we have green energy, we have representative from uh, as well uh, water industry, we have agriculture. So it's not just, uh, you know, um, uh, one particular um, uh, vertical of the SME, it's like really diverse and they all are uh, already financial active for numerous years and they, they are, we could call them that they are like 
in the way how they could be financial stable, right? And they just really need acceleration within their business. They really need access to the peer-to-peer -peer consultancy that could be provided uh, through our program. And they need as well uh, understanding how they could integrate this input component with their business, uh, with, within their business strategy to become even more attractive for uh, uh, European partners. As it was mentioned today, is one of the most critical needs uh, by the um, numerous people um, at this um, uh, panel. Um, so that's the program that started and it's now will last for a year. Uh, obviously our goal to make it even bigger, it's now a national level. We want really next year have opportunity uh, to uh, have access to this uh, platform, to this ecosystem, to this tool, you could call it whatever you want to call it, for more than thousands, uh, basically SMEs. And um, I believe, in, if I'm not mistaken, a dear business, platform, it's already over 20,000 uh, SMEs. So there is, as you see, a huge ocean to go, right? And it wouldn't be possible to do on our own, right? That's why our main call for today, let's unite. I'm sure many of you might heard uh, the, 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 the impact business for the first time, and maybe you even wasn't thinking this as one of the actually opportunity to improve uh, of uh, investment, uh, uh, basically um, attractiveness of Ukrainian businesses. But we really believe that there is no uh, social economy and economy. We really believe that uh, a whole economy should be very impact economy. And we truly believe that uh, Ukrainian business in a great position, you know, to become a world showcase uh, uh, in terms how they could uh, be active within solving biggest uh, challenges, uh, not just of Ukraine, not just post-war Ukraine, not just part of recovery uh, uh, program, but as well, uh, basically, uh, world challenges that um, I think we, 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 we all facing, basically. Yeah, so please join us in our efforts. We are already collaborating with some of you, and we will be very happy as well to unite other actors within our ecosystem to support Ukrainian SMEs. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Levchuk. I think it's uh, I think it's a great initiative. Uh, it's also was uh, I learned about your organization. We can learn a lot about this in the European Union about this 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 uh, the goals are the same, but about this initiative. I think it's a huge difference to Russia where they prepare to transform a, a society in, in the economy only for war, while Ukraine is uh, transforming the society and and the economy for the future. And this is a huge difference. And uh, I think this is uh, the different culture of these two countries. Um, now we have the chance um, to have a short discussion because of time for questions uh, or comments about what we heard now. Uh, perhaps Ivan Stefanitz, perhaps you would like to, to follow up here. Please, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Horst. I'd like to reflect to some ideas which are being raised. First of all, Marcin Nowatsky mentioned that uh, it's necessary also to uh, put it on the new level and to start uh, open uh, uh, an open negotiation. I think I, I fully agree with this point. Uh, it's uh, highly time. Uh, part particularly by the end of this year, we are pushing that. I'd like to ensure all of you that we are pushing for that in order to start to open um, negotiation by the end of this year. Uh, so uh, this is this is first point. Secondly, I, I have to say that I like also the ideas which are fully in line with our views, uh, which were raised by Katerina Glaskova about the educational program. I think that's something what is necessary also uh, to work on and to open educational programs also for Ukrainian SMEs from European perspective. So we will push for that also from uh, European Parliament. Another point I'd like um, also point uh, which was raised by Olena Iraut uh, about uh, the access to finance as the burden, which is uh, also something uh, which is the challenge uh, as well as uh, uh, this point about creating platform for SMEs, uh, which can be uh, shared and uh, it might be some kind of uh, permanent platform. I think SME Europe as our organization 
uh, we can play the role here and uh, we can uh, organize some kind of uh, permanent basis for sharing experiences and also a uh, platform where uh, SMEs can connect, can interact and can come also to, to, to new ideas. Uh, this is uh, basically the idea which can be built on matchmaking uh, platform. Uh, this is the initiative by uh, European Commission, as I mentioned at the beginning uh, and the first round has been already organized i do believe there will be more rounds for matchmaking platforms but um, uh, this is like one uh, one time event i think what we need more it is really the permanent uh, exchange of information and permanent platform and and i take this idea uh, as the also uh, as the initiative which can be developed from a uh, point of view of SMEs Europe. Thank you, Horst. And then I would give also the opportunity after this feedback to Mr. Kokopetz. Perhaps you would like to comment what you heard here. Uh, thank you. Uh, I, I heard uh, many interesting ideas and uh, uh topics uh, where we can uh, rule our efforts in uh, implementation uh, uh, this program single market program and uh, uh, role of uh, ukraine in uh, participating in this program so we uh, can be more uh, productive, effective, I guess, with your help uh, to implementing uh, more efficiently this program. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now we have to now last five minutes. So the last chance for questions or comments also between the speakers, perhaps you hear something we would like to to highlight or to, to see. I think, uh, Ms. Glaskovka, please, the floor is you. Thank you. I just want to, to say one more uh, uh, important message that this matchmaking, uh, cooperation, uh, uh, deals even uh, different uh, um, communication between European uh, businesses and Ukrainian businesses, we need transparency, and we need a reliable partner. And uh, it seems to me that the business association, business community, uh, which are represent here, especially today, could be this reliable partner uh, and to, to, to help to build these uh, bridges between Ukrainian and uh, uh, European uh, businesses, companies under the war and after our, uh, uh, after our win, and uh, it's very important to have such a reliable uh, association, reliable partners, which could be the, make this role uh, in Ukraine and some such uh, association in U in EU. And we are now working on uh, building such uh, cooperation with different associations in different countries. And I want to say thank you, our Polish partners uh, and Kiev office of Polish partner uh, ZPP. We made together a special um, seminars, webinars for our members, how to start to work in the Polish market, uh, to start to, uh, to export uh, products or the goods or, or services. And it's, it's really important and really um, uh, work when we know each other. And uh, as well, uh, as I mentioned, reliable is the answer, is the key of this uh, situation. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have also some questions from the audience, uh, two from Mr. Pablo Rizzi. Uh, is there any initiative acting or emerging aim to utilize the power of entrepreneurship to support SME development in Ukraine? And who can be the best person to talk about this? Uh, I think your organizations are the best partners for these questions, or is there for, for, for these questions uh, um, I think this is, you are the partners for, for these SMEs, uh, or did, do you have another answer for this question from Mr. Rizzi? And the second question is, 
Is there any initiative acting or emerging aimed to utilize the power of co-innovation between Ukraine SMEs and European ones aimed to boost sustainable innovative solutions? I think this is the European grant system and Horizon and so on, Ukraine can participate there. I think this is then the, the tool to cooperate with each other. So this would be my answers, but I'm not the, the, the expert here. Do somebody has a better direct answer or we will try to answer this question later? But you're right, <clears throat> I guess innovative solutions uh, could be found um, and could be applied actually this is really very essential. And I would like to reiterate the message with regards to B2B matching what what Katerina has already um, raised. Uh, I think that speed uh, and timing is essential because nowadays SMEs, at least in Ukraine, they, they need immediate support. They cannot wait for a long period of time because otherwise they will fall apart. And what we see and what we monitor on the European market when we operate and cooperate with different institutions and associations, we see certain, you know, of course, the rhythms uh, are very different. This is uh, A. Uh, and second, obviously, Ukrainian SMEs sector should also also understand the differences in mentality, which is also appropriate to in each country, in each particular country of European Union, you have its own atmosphere. And I would also like to join the gratitude um, to the PP because we, uh, we settled up this cooperation with Polish partners, and we see some actually progress uh, on making B2B matching. Uh, but obviously, Polish market is good, uh, but it's not enough. And what SMEs is uh, in needing, uh, what, what it needs, it needs uh, to have also pragmatic and practical solutions. Uh, business cannot, you know, you know, absorb uh, abstract proposals. So they need to understand what um, is really necessary what is valuable for them now and in the future and then obviously associations like ours can somehow help them to actually to be more successful using those mechanisms and instruments which will be available or are available on the market and by the way it was a question on the eu when ukraine will become a member of the eu you know it seems it seems to me the question is really it's uh, not possible to predict uh, but at least the ukrainian government believes that the the time frame would be from 3 to 7 years uh, let's see whether they are optimistic or realistic. But what is essential in this uh, thing is actually the work of businesses. Uh, because, uh, you know, uh, government is government. It will be intergovernmental uh, solutions and intergovernmental negotiations. But obviously, SMEs from both sides will play a role. And in this respect, I think that we need to combine efforts and we need to build, you know, bridges between different countries, associations, so that to find um, fine lines, uh, for smoothing and making integration of Ukraine into European family more easy. Thank you very much. I think, uh, Mr. Rivanko, this was a very good point, what you mentioned. It must be practical. It must be has directly a business impact. It is no difference to our SMEs and you are, our, your SMEs are in a more difficult environment. Uh, I can only say uh, we can invite you to our SME Connect network and we try then to reach out to the member states because Brussels is important, but the business is in the member states. And like you mentioned, the cultures are different if you make business in Italy or in Germany or in, in Poland. And I think there we have to train, but it must be very concrete. It must be simple and it must be successful. And I can only invite you to act together and we have the co connections to other associations like ZPP, who makes a great job uh, in, in Kiev and in Poland. And uh, I look forward for a further exchange. And uh, yeah, and really to make it simple, you have to help us really to make things not complicated, not uh, that we have things now, but also to create the future. I think both is, is necessary. And I say thank you very much. The time is over. I think there's a lot more to discuss. There are more questions. Perhaps next time with the exchange directly with SMEs from your side and SMEs from our side, because they know exactly what they need, where the problems are. 